All right, let's talk about Deshaun Watson, who there's no getting around it. His Monday Night Football performance was it was not great. Not a great Monday Night Football performance. And some of the stuff was kind of fluky, and we'll get into it. Uh, I should start off by mentioning, I don't know what it is, but in my you know four years of doing this stuff, I've never seen a player get defended more than Deshaun Watson. I don't know what it is, but anytime I've criticized his play, people very... Uh, vehemently defend him so not sure exactly what that is but if you're someone who's looking for a defense of Deshaun Watson's football playing ability uh you've come to the wrong place I did not think he played well and let's get into uh why I didn't think he played well Starting off with this, I mean, some of it was simply just good defense by Pittsburgh. Like, that has to be mentioned. This is a third down and eight situation. And, you know, okay, zone coverage. You can see how this play could work, right? There could be a window for Watson to try and make this throw. Uh, the Steelers showing as though they're going to be blitzing, but they are going to drop back in the coverage. Either way, though, this route could work. Watson's going to take the snap. He is going to look down the field. He fires down the field. And, again, there is a little bit of a window right here, but you see that defender closing in quickly. That's Joey Porter Jr., uh, a name who, you know, kind of got known for get uh, towards the end of the game, uh, getting away with a, you know, what probably should have been pass interference, but here, watch what he's going to do. As you see, he comes back nicely, and that's just a corner beating a receiver, really. I don't, I don't know if Elijah Moore could have made something happen there, but either way, it's a great defensive play, and that was a lot of what happened. And in fact, we can even talk about the, uh, the fumble as well. We'll jump over here because like the, you know, the interception, the pick six, that was just a fluky play. I, I don't hold that on Deshaun Watson. And this one was kind of the same where it's going to be Alex Highsmith going one-on-one -on -one against a left tackle. And watch how quickly he wins. I mean, that's just an immediate pressure and an immediate win by, uh, by Highsmith to be able to get over there and knock the ball away. That's great stuff from him and, you know, great stuff from TJ Watt to locate it, pick it up, and stay on your feet, get the touchdown, all that good stuff as well. But this is something where it's like, I don't really, I have a hard time blaming Watson for that play. I mean, you know, you expect a little bit more time than that on a play action. It doesn't always work out. To me, I, I wouldn't say either of those two touchdowns that were given up uh, off the hand of Watson were actually Watson's fault. I think all that stuff is fair. But there were some negatives, and some of the negatives maybe could be explained, like something like this, it's a cover three zone that the Steelers are in, and, and I'm going to bet that there might have been some communication issue here, because usually when you see throws that are just completely off, it's usually less often just a missed throw, and more so like, uh, you know, uh, just people weren't on the same page, where watch what happens on this play. Watson takes a snap, he is going to fire this ball down the field, and right here, um, you know, I do have to say... In general, I'm not exactly sure what he sees, because while I could sit here and say there should be a receiver in the area, at the end of the day, there still is a defensive back in the area, so it's still a dangerous pass, even if you're expecting your wide receiver to get over towards the corner of the end zone. Maybe it's it makes more sense in that scenario, but this is also a first down and 10. I'm usually more lenient on quarterbacks arm punting on third downs than I think some other people are. But in this scenario, uh, you know, I'll probably be more defensive of Watson on this play than your average person would be. But this is still a uh, watch what happens. I mean, Watson's just begging for this to be an interception. He was trying to throw an interception there and failed. Basically, that's just a drop pass right there. Uh, that just can't happen. And that was, uh, you know, uh, that was a misplay from Watson. And he had a, quite a few misplays in this game, I thought. Going over to something like this, I did think this was a big issue that the Browns have. And I think something that like, okay, I'm assuming if you're a Browns fan, you're saying, listen, as long as Watson starts playing great football, then we're good. We're going to play well. You know, uh, we're happy. But the issue is, even if Watson goes back to Houston to Sean Watson, there's a real receiving core issue, I think, in this game. Amari Cooper is great. We all know Amari Cooper is great. Uh, you know, Outside of that, they didn't have a single wide receiver against Pittsburgh, according to PFF grades, play even an average game. Uh, they had some players playing well below average. Uh, so, you know, that's tough. And you need to get guys to get open. And by receiver, I mean, you know, receiver or tight end. Uh, also, one asterisk, David Bell in 11 snaps did also play well, but only 11 snaps. But like, watch how when Watson takes a snap, you're going to see him look downfield, look downfield, look downfield. Eventually, he just says, well, I guess I got to get outside the pocket because this play has been going on for forever. Uh, it's been over five seconds at this point. Really good blocking by the offensive line, but what can you do? 
Well, we're going to see Watson on this play. He's just going to, you know, uh, go with a face mask there, which is not allowed. Uh, again, you can kind of, uh, you, you can touch the face mask as an offensive player, but you can't grab the face mask and throw the player to the ground. That's a penalty. Um, so now he's at this point, which you are actually going to see him uh, show something, I think, that we have seen him show. Watch how he is going to do a good job of moving in open space. That is something that has been a part of his game since he's come over to Cleveland, he still is just as athletic, and his ability to use his legs has still very much been there for Cleveland. Like, this play is another one where what's going to happen is that it's a second down and goal, uh, and again, it's going to be a similar thing where watch what happens. Right when this ball is snapped, you know, he could throw it there. I think that there's an opportunity. There's a window to make that throw if he wants to. I wouldn't hate that decision, but he has a different idea. As you see, watch him instead scramble outside the pocket, which causes every Pittsburgh player to follow him, uh, which leaves a running back wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. So his playmaking ability, his ability to move around, it still exists. So for anyone saying, uh, you know, he just completely sucks now, well, there are still positive aspects of his game for sure, even if he still needs to really, I mean, kind of the main thing is like, he's just not really even making any like impressive throws at this point. He had maybe one or two uh, in this game, but for the most part, he's not going above and beyond and he still is making these errors. And also like mental errors, like something like this. It's just like, what are you doing? Where it's a second down and 10 situation. Uh, this is, you know, five minutes left in the game. You're up three points at midfield. So really important play, uh, you know, or at least uh, important time in the game is maybe the way I should phrase it. Right when this play begins, you're going to see that Watson, it looks like it was a design quarterback run, but Pittsburgh's all over it. I'm going to pause it right here as Quan Alexander is making, you know, he has a beat on Watson. And I'm guessing what Watson is doing right here, how he feels is like he's trying to get out, out of bounds and he sees Quan Alexander's about to tackle him and he's maybe annoyed about that. I guess, but like you're in bounds, he's allowed to tackle you. You can just throw the ball away if you don't want to get tackled. Like you don't have a right to just get out of bounds if you don't want to get tackled. Slide or throw the ball away. It's, it's you know that's that. Those are your options when you're in bounds. The broadcast showed a lot of like slow motion angles of this, but I actually think the real speed just like really to me shows more of a question. Watch what he's gonna do. I mean, watch him grab on the face mask and just shove Quan Alexander to the side. Like Alexander, I mean. Why are you even doing that to begin with? Like, yeah, Alexander kind of pushed off Watson at a certain point, but because he had his face mask get grabbed randomly, as all you're doing is running him out of bounds. Like, Alexander did nothing wrong there, in my opinion. That's entirely Deshaun Watson getting frustrated, at maybe just because he was having a bad series uh, and, you know, got upset, but that, like, completely sunk their opportunity to, you know, that, that killed a drive, basically. It's just a mental error, and it's like, you're not playing well enough to do those. You could do that in Houston because you were playing well enough. Now you got to cut that out. So how do I view Watson at this point? I don't know. Like I said, it feels like every time I criticize him, people keep saying, well, it, give him more time, give him more time, give him more time. But, like, this kind of goes back to my original point of, like, why doesn't Cleveland play him in the preseason? If I was running the Browns, and uh, I had to, you know, decide how much t playing time Watson was going to get. I'm playing him every snap of preseason, especially after how he looked last year. I want him to have more reps. I think we can have a conversation about will he ever get back to playing like he did in Houston. My guess would be yes. I, I can't think of a scenario where a player like went from great to awful the way we've kind of seen. I guess Carson Wentz would be the other comparison you could maybe bring up. So it's not unprecedented necessarily but it, it would be very surprising but it's like yes we are allowed to say that Watson isn't playing good football right now maybe it's a reps thing that seems like the most logical conclusion maybe it's just because of the fact that he you know missed all that time and you know what he had going on in his life he just hasn't been able to you know keep up with football and you know and maybe he won't ever get back I have no idea but right now he's just making way too many mistakes don't think it was quite as bad as maybe some people would uh say he was on Monday you know for example PFF had him with a 59.9 grade that's kind of you know usually 60 that's kind of what you feel like is like a I don't know, the 25th best player in football, like a 60 grade in terms of quarterbacks, like 25th best quarterback would do that. So, uh, you know, kind of a low tier starting quarterback caliber play, not like a, you know, he's not even playable type of game from him. But again, you're paying him to be a superstar. And right now he's only being like a, a low tier starter. That's a massive, that's just a, a massive bad performance that he needs to improve upon. And we'll see if he does. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. 
always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.